Welcome to worship. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, just a couple quick notes for you before we get started. Uh, you can download a bulletin to follow along. Uh, all the information that you need will be in there. Or you can follow the words. Most of the words will be on your screen. Uh, we do ask that you fill out a connection card. If you download the bulletin, the QR code that you can scan for that is on page two. So you can scan that, fill it out, just so that we can be connected and uh, see who's joining us. Also, we will be celebrating Holy Communion during worship today. So if you are wanting to participate in that, take this time to gather some bread and wine so that you can fully participate in that. That's all the announcements I have for you today. Uh, thanks for, again for joining, and we're so excited that you're here. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bethany Lutheran Church. In case we haven't had a chance to meet yet or you've forgotten who I am, my name is Nate Preisinger. I serve as one of the pastors here at Bethany. I serve alongside Pastor Gary Sandberg and our pastoral intern, Rita Argus. Um, Pastor Gary is currently away this week. He is with a group from Bethany that has traveled to Germany for the Omogamarau Passion Play. I understand they arrived safely and that they had a great time uh, watching the play on Friday, I believe it was, but now have some other traveling to do together and they'll be back later this week. But here's what's most important. Pastor Gary will be with us next Sunday, and you should mark your calendars for that, because next Sunday is his 60th birthday. You heard that right. Yes, so we are going to celebrate that next week. You can give him a really hard time about how he's the old pastor here and I'm the young pastor here. Next Sunday, 
But this week, it's June 19th, it is Father's Day, a very happy Father's Day to all fathers, father figures, grandfathers who are here with us today. Thank you for all the ways that you care for those around you in that particular role. One other piece I wanted to let you know about, actually two other pieces. Um, within our worship service today, everything is printed in the bulletin, just follow along, but we are moving into a different liturgical setting. So the music might not be familiar, um, it might be a little different, so just listen along. I think they're going to turn my mic up real loud like they did at the first service, um, so that you can kind of hear and get a sense of how these songs go, and if you know it, please sing along loud uh, so that we can all join in. It's a really beautiful setting and just great for the summer months. Also wanted to let you know about our altar flowers. We have flowers over here that were given by Reen and Delphine Crothers in honor of their 65th wedding anniversary. 65 years together. They were at our first service. Yes, we could clap for them. That's a big accomplishment. <laughs> If you see Irene and Delphine uh, this week, be sure to wish them a happy anniversary. Okay, I think those were all the details that I wanted to let you know about here at the beginning of worship this morning. Uh, and so I'll invite you now to just take a moment of silence uh, to collect yourself so that we can enter into worship together. We come from busy lives and an often chaotic world, but we are gathered together this day to hear about the promises of God for our life and our world. So please just take a moment to center yourself, and I'll begin with the confession and forgiveness in just a short moment. The order for confession and forgiveness is printed in your bulletin in the middle of page three. I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Friends, let us confess our sin now in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, I therefore declare to you that your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. In response then to this gracious good news, we join in singing our opening hymn, We Come to You for Healing, Lord. It's printed on page four in your bulletin.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, you may be seated, and the young ones among us may come forward for a children's song. Come on, don't leave me hanging. It's okay. Yeah, I know you. All right. Come on down, everybody. We have not only a children's sermon, but all summer long, we're also going to have a craft for you. So intern Rita and Miss Gail are going to be handing those out right now. This is a craft you can take back to your seat and work on if you like. Yeah, all right. Good morning, good morning. So, tell me, what do you often do when something good happens? What do you do when something good happens? You feel good. You feel good? Oh, yeah, that's a good answer. You smile. What else, what else, what else? Come on. Huh? You want to do it more often? Okay. Sometimes, do you tell your friends about it? No? If something good happens to you, you won a prize or an award, or your sports team won. You like to tell people about it? Yeah. And you like to do it more often. You like to tell people about it and do it more often. Well, your craft kit today, you can be working on this. You can make a card for someone who you know and love, like your dad, because it's Father's Day. That's a great idea. A card for someone to say, thank you for being in my life and for what you do. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus is going to heal this man, and then at the end of the story, what Jesus says to the man is, go and tell everyone what God has done for you. 
So go with a joyful heart. And so we're going to kind of do that too with these cards. You're going to say thank you. Yeah, if you wanted to make something special for your, your dad on Father's Day or a grandpa or just someone else in general too, it's always good to let people know that you appreciate what they've done for you. Sound good? All right. Why don't you head back to your seats and you can get started on that. Feel free to show me what you come up with too at the end of worship here. Thanks for coming up, everybody. Oh, you got, oh, we, it's okay. Here we go. All right, here we go, buddy. You to hold it like this. Awesome. Go ahead, buddy. Just walk back. Here we go. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Also, welcome to the second Sunday in Pentecost. The reading today is uh, from Galatians, written by Apostle Paul. For Paul, baptism is a powerful bond that unites people not only with God, but with other believers. Those who call themselves children of God experience a transformation that removes prejudice of race, social class, gender, in favor of true unity in Christ. The re reading from Galatians chapter 3, beginning with verse 23. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have closed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, no longer slave or free, no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time, this man had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the, the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. And then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So Jesus got into his boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with Jesus, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home 
and declare how much God has done for you. And so he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So this morning, we are going to discuss the following. Things you might not know. The wrong side of the Sea of Galilee. A man with no name. Liberation. Full tuition scholarships. And the character of God. Let's get started. As you may or may not know, today is Juneteenth. This is a new federal holiday signed into law last year, but it has been an annual celebration in our country for over 150 years. The holiday originated in Galveston, Texas, after the enslaved people of Texas were officially emancipated on June 19, 1865. It has grown to become a celebration of the ending of slavery in the United States and a celebration of African American culture. Okay, here's another thing that you may or may not know. I served a congregation in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, before being called here to Bethany. The congregation that I served in Philadelphia was a predominantly black Lutheran church. And so long before it became a federal holiday, Reformation Lutheran Church celebrated and commemorated Juneteenth as a congregation. And I've got to tell you, those Juneteenth celebrations at Reformation were always so powerful for me because they were always so theological. That's right, I said theological. They expressed deeply what we know about God's character. The songs and the prayers on that day were always about how God had brought liberation again. The celebration linked the freeing of the slaves on Juneteenth to the freeing of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. The language of the celebration really articulated the character of God. It highlighted the ways that God works to free us from sin and death and invited us all to turn toward the future with hope. Because if God brought freedom in Egypt and freedom on Juneteenth, well, then certainly God can bring liberation again to whatever might be tyrannizing us today. Our gospel lesson this morning also speaks to this idea that Jesus has the power to free individuals from their oppression. But the passage also speaks to the ways that Jesus' liberating power isn't always welcomed by the world. In our gospel lesson, Jesus arrives with his disciples in a region known in those days as the Gerasenes. Now, scholars aren't exactly sure, geographically speaking, where this area might have been. But all that Luke tells us is that it's on the other side, opposite of Galilee. As in, it's on the other side of the tracks, as in it's, it's the Gentile part of town, as in it is a very, very strange place for a Jewish rabbi and his disciples to travel to. And so in this town, where rabbis did not usually travel, Jesus steps off the boat and is immediately greeted by a man who's possessed by demons. And the details that Luke provides us with when describing this particular man, are heartbreaking. We're told that this man hasn't worn clothes in a long time. We're told that he was often shackled. We're told that he lived in a tomb, which not only means that he's living in a place surrounded by death, but he's living in a place far outside of the normal run of society. The demons inside this man have so poisoned his life that he had no home and no clothes and no contact with others. He was living in a literal grave. And in addition to all of this, he was also so damaged that he now lived without a name. Jesus asked him what his name was, and it was the demons who replied and said, Legion, for we are many. The man didn't even have a name. The picture of utter hopelessness that Luke is painting for us can't be understated. But nor can we ignore the fact that this is the first person Jesus encounters when he arrives on the shore. 
It's as if Jesus traveled across the lake to the wrong side of town specifically to care and heal this helpless and hopeless man. Maybe you've experienced some of what this man is facing in your own life. Maybe you've been cut off from others before. You've been forced out of a social group for whatever reason. Or maybe you felt locked up inside, perhaps not by literal shackles like the man, but maybe you've struggled to understand your emotions and just felt constricted and confused about what's going on inside you. Or maybe grief and loss and the tragedies of this world have left you feeling like you're living in a tomb, surrounded on death, by death on all sides. Or maybe you felt like a person without a name, unsure of who you truly are, and who you're supposed to be. If you've ever felt any of these things, I want you to hear this gospel story and know that Jesus will come for you. Crossing seas, staring down demons, going into the tombs. This is what Jesus does for us. This is what our Christian faith is built on. The belief that there's no place Jesus won't go. The belief that the most hopeless situations are actually where God shows up to bring liberation and new life. This is the beautiful truth that we have to claim again and again every single day. To, To simply believe that God is reaching out to us to heal and guide and free us from whatever demons might be raging inside us or around us. When you're feeling isolated, God sends community. When we feel locked up and confused, the word of God can bring clarity. When we feel overcome with grief, God sends support and the promise of the resurrection. When we don't know who we are, God calls us by name and says, you are mine. I should probably just stop the sermon right there because I'm convinced that this is all that we really need to hear. We need to be reminded again and again of the grace and love of Jesus. We need to be reminded that there is always hope for the future, that there is no place Jesus won't go to save and heal. But the truth is, God is constantly reminding us of these things and sending these promises into our life, and so often we miss them. After all, just look at what happens in the gospel passage. Jesus goes to this town across the sea, maybe just to heal this one man, or maybe to proclaim to that entire region the grace and love of God. Only it seems that the people of the town miss the message. Because after Jesus casts out the entire legion of demons plaguing this man, the people of the town ask Jesus to leave. It's the ugly underbelly of the story, the tragic truth of our human existence. We love to think about the ways that Jesus will cross oceans to save us, but we often have a really hard time accepting when we see that grace extended to someone else. We can feel like those people don't deserve a second chance. They've made their mistakes. It's their fault. Why should they receive healing and wholeness and grace and not me? I have a story about this. Before coming to Bethany, before serving at Reformation Lutheran Church, I was the director of admissions at the Lutheran Seminary in Philadelphia. And during my time working at the seminary, it was announced that the school would be giving out full tuition scholarships to every student that enrolled full-time at the institution. And now in the admissions office, we were very excited about this news because we were expecting it to bring in more applications, people to be excited, to finally pursue that dream of a seminary education. And so I remember my boss telling me to cancel all my afternoon appointments and to plan to work a little later on the day when the announcement was made public so that I could be there to field phone calls and emails from all the excited prospective students. And so the announcement was posted as a press release and shared around on social media at noon on a Wednesday. And at 12.07, seven minutes later, I received my first email about the full tuition scholarships. Only it wasn't from a prospective student. No, it was from an alumni of the seminary. And he was furious. 
He wanted to know if the seminary would also be paying off all of his student loan debt that he had incurred while attending that institution. And you know what? Part of me gets it. I've got student loan debt too, largely from my seminary education. And I often wish that I had just waited a few years and taken advantage of the full tuition scholarships that were coming later on. But I'm pretty sure that this isn't the way that Jesus wants us to think. When God's grace is shown to someone besides us, that shouldn't be an invitation to get resentful and bitter. When we see liberation and new life and forgiveness and healing extended to someone else, it should be a cause of joy because it's reminding us that this is who God is, that this is how God acts. And even if we currently are not the recipients of some sort of undeserved blessing from God, the very presence of this grace at work in the world should be a reminder that we can still trust and believe in the goodness of God. The truth is, church, is that we are the hands and feet of God. We are the body of Christ. And so we're called to work for the liberation of others, to bring healing and wholeness to those in need. We're called to act with, act with compassion to those who feel isolated or those who feel locked up inside or those who feel like they've lost their very identity. We're called to reach out to those people so that they can feel seen and whole once again. And when we act like this, or even when we just witness this type of liberation and healing taking place in someone else's life, let it be a reminder to us of the grace and love of God. May it fill our hearts with hope because we have witnessed the power of Jesus Christ at work in our world once again. May it remind us that this is who God is, that this is what God has done, and most importantly, that this is what God will do again for those in need. Amen. In response to the proclamation, we join in singing our hymn of the day, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, found on page 7. I invite you all to stand.
We join together in professing our faith using the historic words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And now we join in the sacrament of holy baptism for Elsie May, uh, daughter of Andrew and Alyssa Melton. So we gather at these living waters throughout history, God's saving action towards God's people has taken place through water. Let us pray. Most holy God, you created the seas, rivers, and lakes. You saved Noah and his family from the floods. You led the Israelites through the Red Sea and quenched their thirst with water flowing from a rock. Through the waters of the Jordan River, you proclaimed Jesus as your own beloved son. And so through these waters of baptism, you proclaim that we too are your own beloved children, now and forever. Amen. Parents, do you wish Elsie to be baptized into the promises of God? If so, respond with, I do. We make promises and assume responsibilities at baptism. God promises us unconditional love and life forever. And we know that our journey of faith encompasses certain promises so that our lives reflect this love. Parents, do you promise to live with your child among God's faithful people, bring your child to the Lord's table, teach them the Lord's prayer and the creed and the Ten Commandments, place the Holy Scriptures in their hands to nurture their faith and prayer life so that they will know and trust God? If so, respond with, I do. Parents, sponsors, and people of God, do you promise to support and pray for Elsie's new life in Christ? We do. All right, Elsie, may you ready? I'm ready, girl. Okay, I'll right over the water here. Elsie May, child of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, go back to Mama right away. Let us pray. Sustain Elsie, O oh God, with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. In ancient times, prophets and kings would be anointed with oil, thereby symbolizing the presence and blessing and guidance of God. But here at our baptism, we anoint the newly baptized with oil, also praying that God would guide and bless their life in Christ. And so we say... Elsie May, child of God, you have been sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Gail Newell, our director of children's ministry, lights the baptismal candle and presents it to the baptismal fam family. Light is also a, a biblical symbol symbolizing the guidance of Christ. And so we present that candle to Elsie that she might be guided by Christ in her life and faith. And we say to her, Elsie May, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. You like that, don't you? Yeah. All right. I'll invite the whole baptismal family to come forward to the center of the space. So as they make their way over there, people of Bethany, you promised to care and pray for little Elsie in her life of Christ. That's a real serious thing. I always joke that it takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a church to raise a child in the faith. And so now I'll invite you to use the words at the bottom of page 8 as we welcome our new sibling in Christ. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a member of the body of Christ, child of God's kingdom on earth and in heaven. Let's welcome Elsie.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace with those around you. Hey, peace. Well, good morning, everyone. I just have a couple of brief announcements in this time that we like to call Abundantly Bethany. Uh, first, there are two notes of things that are due today. One is the backpack and school supply drive. Uh, all of the items for that are due today, so if you've picked up something that you've been thought you were going to bring, you need to bring that today. Uh, and second is Bethany Day Camp and Art Camp. Uh, the registrations are open, and we would like if people could register by today. Uh, and also, we are in need of snacks. Uh, last I heard, we had a bag of raisins and some granola bars. So as good as those snacks are, we would like some more. So if you could bring snacks uh, to feed our little ones who love snacks, that would be super helpful. Uh, additionally, as today is Juneteenth, the church offices will be closed tomorrow in honor of that uh, holiday. So if you are looking for ways to commemorate that day, there is info about a Juneteenth uh, festival in your email blast as well on, as on the Bethany news page. And finally, uh, just looking for ways to connect this summer here at Bethany. On page 14 in your bulletin are all the ways that you can connect here with your church. One thing that I do want to note is that this Wednesday, I will be at Lair of the Bear at 6 p.m. for a Bible hike. So we'll do a short devotional and then walk through God's creation. Uh, Lair of the Bear is a pretty easy walk for all ages. So you can come join me and my dog, Jelly Bean, if you'd like to meet her. Uh, she would be more than excited to meet you. Those are all of the announcements that I have for you this morning. Uh, as now we turn in our worship service to a time of offering. So all the ways that you can give are listed on page nine in your bulletin. And we do make space in our worship services for this act of worship. And so while we make that space, we hear an offertory anthem. shall the king say unto them upon his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepare Oh, 
Let us pray. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized. You hear the cries of those who are cast out. We give you thanks for your liberating power that breaks the shackles of oppression and restores humanity to the disenfranchised. Make us instruments of grace to resist slavery in all manifestations that no person shall be denied the right to thrive and fully realize their divine purpose in you. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are experiencing homelessness, those who are naked, those who are hungry, those who are experiencing mental illness, and those who are sick. We lift to you Michael, Donata, John, Ellie, Mimi, James, Kathy, Zoe, Zachary, the people of Ukraine, and the victims of gun violence. Bring peace to them so that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. We lift these and the prayers on our hearts to you, holy God, trusting in your mercy and grace. Amen. We gather now for the ancient Christian practice of Holy Communion. Please know that everyone who's joining us here in the sanctuary or together with us on the live stream is invited to participate in communion this day. Here at Bethany Lutheran Church, we believe that Jesus never put restrictions when he first celebrated the communion meal, and so neither do we. If you will be spiritually nourished by this meal, please come and be fed at Christ's table today. Our communion liturgy is printed in your bulletin beginning at the bottom of page 9. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you. It is shed for all people, for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering then Christ's death and resurrection, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. You can find the instructions about communion distribution printed in your bulletin in the middle of page 10. Just a brief uh, review of that. The ushers will invite you forward. Uh, feel free to make your way to a communion station that's positioned at the front of each of the seating areas. Those communion servers will have a wafer that they'll hand you, and then you're invited to dip that wafer in the small cup of wine that they also are holding, thereby receiving the body and blood of Christ. Please note that if you require a gluten-free option or an alcohol-free option, or if you're just more comfortable with a pre-packaged communion kit, that there are silver trays positioned in the front of the three main seating areas when you can feel free to grab one of those pre-packaged kits and then still do come forward to the communion server to hear those important words, the body and blood of Christ broken and shed for you. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the banquet for all is now ready.
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And now at this time, I'll invite you to be seated. You're going to see why in a second. Rodé and Andres and Haleta, if you would come forward, please, to the front of the sanctuary. I have to grab something real quick. And I'll let you stand right here. So you can turn around for a second. So Rodé and Andres, I'm sad to announce that they are moving next week to Virginia, which is a sad loss for us in our congregation, but we are so proud and excited to announce. They have been here and been members of Bethany for a while, and while, while they were here, Rodé was working on her PhD at ILIF, which is a seminary right down the street based out of DU. And she received a PhD in practical theology, and we're so excited to announce that she has received a, an assistant professor position at Virginia Theological Seminary. So she will be teaching there starting next week. And so we are so excited, Rodé, to see all the great things that you will do. Haleta, we can't wait to see pictures of you as you grow. She was baptized here maybe two years ago, a year and a half ago or so. Uh, one of our many COVID baptisms. So that was interesting as well. And Andres, have been such a, you have all been such a blessing to this congregation. And so we want to send them with our prayers and God's blessings as they go on this new adventure to Virginia. So we hear first a reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Friends, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of this church. When you came to this congregation, we rejoiced to welcome you into the mission we share as the people of God. In this community, you have come to know and to share in God's loving presence for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servants, Rodé, Andres, and Haleta, who have enriched this congregation and shared their gifts with the people of God in this place. Now, bless and preserve them at this time of transition. Day by day, guide them and give them what is needed friends to cheer their way, and a clear vision of that to which you are now calling them. By your Holy Spirit, be present in their pilgrimage, that they may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as a parting gift to remember us by the new Bethany Travel Mugs, you can drink this while you teach class, Rodé, and tell everyone about this great church in Denver that you are a part of, and Andres, you as well. Uh, you can also, Haleta, it's a great sippy cup too, so you can use it as well. All right, sweetie? Let's give them one last round of applause. We wish you well. God bless you. God bless you. It's been such a privilege to know you both. God bless you. God bless you, sweetie. And now I'll invite you to stand to receive the benediction. Friends, the word benediction means good words, so hear these good words. Wherever you go, know that God is there with you, laughing at your joys, crying at your sorrows, listening to your frustrations, and every other moment in between, because you are a called and claimed child of God. In the name of the Creator and Redeemer and Sustainer, amen. We join in singing our sending hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West.
in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.